Man, what is going on, everybody? I'm Josh Douglas. Welcome to another episode of What's on My Deck. It's May. May means so much to different anglers in different areas of the country. Up north at home, Minnesota, where I'm from, uh, the fish are probably, you got largemouth down around the city and stuff like that, thinking about pulling up on beds. And then at the same time, smallmouth up north are straight up full blown pre spawn. Uh, a lot of jerk bait, stuff like that great time of year can't wait to get back up there and start guiding but for me i'm down here at lake fork in texas for the Bassmaster elite event it was one that i was very nervous about I, I i'd love to see that it heated up looking at the schedule i figured man this is one of the later times that they're they come to fork should set up better for me you know i want to get behind my lorances i want to stare at them i want to sneak out you know find little sneak holes and, and those spots that i feel like i can catch big bags off of uh and it's also at a place that a lot of these anglers have been to annually it's an annual event with texas fest and, and bass fest and all the way through it's just an annual spot that they come to so being my first time i definitely uh, knew i was going to spend most of my time offshore so doing that i, I you know we got lucky we found one really one really good spot and several other uh, decent spots at the same time i was able to ride that into a 36th place finish uh, a nice payday and great points here a fork and we got pickwick next so we are offshore down here in the south you know i'm, I'm expecting the same for the alabama tennessee area at pickwick um, offshore we are talking early summer post spawn bass and uh my setups for this week are going to base around that. What were the what are the ones that I'm using down here on Lake Fork currently, and I'm going to hang out for the next week and try to catch some more on them and, and try to put together some more videos. But uh, let's dive right into it. Very first one, I am throwing a crankbait, a big crankbait. When you're talking offshore in Texas, you got to be thinking about a big crankbait. This is a new one I've been trying a little bit, been messing around. This is a six cents bait. I don't even know the exact model. I think it's the 20 something. Just a deep plug. I was going around and sometimes I might throw, be throwing a Strike King. Just to, totally depends on Lucky Craft. In this case, I was throwing the Six Sense bait. Uh, in practice, I used it. I didn't fish a whole lot in practice. Um, at night, you know, I'd run around and throw, throw a big plug and I just, you know, all the Texas boys are always talking about Six Sense bait. So I thought that this one would be a good one to try. In the tournament, when the tournament rolled around, I ended up really hunkering down for 75 percent of my tournament in one spot and it wasn't very conducive to a crankbait but in, in practice and while i'm down here i mean this is the tried and true way uh of finding you know big post pond bass down here in texas uh throwing the six cents bait i'm using a g loomis this is an imx pro it's the 906 ccbr so this is seven foot six inches it's a six power so it's like a heavy almost an extra heavy crankbait moderate bend to it so it can handle throwing a big plug like this but at the same time keeps them on it's it's just perfect the, the key is with these baits is being able to cast them a long long way be able to reel them down to maximize your strike in potential bringing it back and then something that's going to keep them on when they just nip at the bait and they just get it something that you can keep them on and and get them back into the boat so and i think the imx pro the 906 cbr is one of the best built for that and of course i'm going to be using a workhorse of a reel i'm using a shimano corrado this is a six speed corrado and i'm running straight 15 pound seager and visex floral carbon line i'd like to throw it on 12 if there wasn't so much timber in lake fork i'd probably still throw it on 12 uh, at the same time 15 is, is still pretty light for for down here but i think it's a good mix of getting both depth out of it and uh hopefully being able to get your crankbait back if you lodge it in wood that's the first setup what's next the big worm anywhere you're offshore from minnesota to texas to florida big worms catch bass right here i'm throwing it's just a biospawn ribbon tail worm the xo ribbon it's in red bug color uh, using an owner this is the new cover shot the heavy duty cover shot uh, I believe that's a four out with a little three eighths ounce Wu Tungsten, never chip weight. Old school method of catching bass, throwing a big worm, whether it's brush piles around, uh, you know, around these stumps and these, these big pine trees that are in the water to just fishing off, off on some of the ledges and stuff like that. A ribbon tail worm in the summertime gets bit. I'm throwing this thing on a G Loomis NRX Plus 894C jig worm rod, JWR, on straight 17 pound floral carbon line. And I'm using a Shimano Metanium XG, it's an eight speed, get the bite, reel them in quick. Awesome setup, super light in my hand and the uh, 894, Jig worm rod NRX Plus is arguably the best bass fishing rod ever made. So perfect. It's right in the name, JWR, jig worm rod. It's got the right action, everything. Heavy, heavy action, super sensitive tip. 
this is a fish catching setup right here. Up next, let's keep it with the cranking. Same rod, but I'm throwing a totally different plug. This is a shallow runner, but it actually gets down about seven, eight feet. This is the Shimano Macbeth 75F. Good color right here. I, I lost one too many that I'd like to admit because I was throwing the heck out of it in this tournament. Uh, at the same time, you know, just throwing around the timber, you got to bang the timber to get the bass. And, and generally, I would never actually lose it reeling it through the timber. It'd be when I'd get a bite and the fish would go to the timber that I'd end up end up losing losing the bait on it but it got it got the bites and it, the 75 this is the big dog in the Macbeth family uh, just an awesome bait for grinding around it gets a little deeper than your traditional shallow running crankbaits do or, or square bill style baits do but again then you can kind of rub bang up it against uh, that brush that deeper brush bring it through brush piles the Macbeth is probably the best bait at bouncing off of cover uh, out there so definitely the Shimano Macbeth again I'm throwing that same G Loomis rod the 906 CCBR that's the 76 heavy perfect moderate heavy just the perfect cranking rod straight 17 pound Seeger and Vizx floral carbon and again I'm using a Shimano Corrado 200G I want those big spools when you're cranking you know you're making big super casts I want that big 200 size spool that you get from the Corrado 200 next up the big spoon this is a Nichols Ben Parker spoon I'm using an old rod actually the uh, the last model NRX 916c umbrella rig rod it's just a good spoon rod for throwing these real big baits uh, again I'm using the Shimano Corrado you start to see uh, a deal here. I'm using this big spools. I'm expecting super long casts, making as big a cast as I can, staying off the ledges, staying off the points, and, and trying to catch bass. So I'm using the 200, except this time I'm using the XG 8 speed. I'm bouncing the spoon up and down. When you get the bite, they hit it while it's on the fall. I really, I, I just, you're about reeling it in. I'm using the rod completely to make the action or ripping the bait. I want a fast stroke and get that spoon up there and fall back in their faces. Uh, and then sit straight 17 or 20 pound Seeger and Vizx floral carbon line. And that's just an, an awesome setup. Uh, don't, you know, a spoon, it's never gonna be my first. I, I do think it's a bait that loses a lot of fish, but it's also a bait that's not replaceable out there when you know the school's there and you're trying to initiate a strike, a, a complete reaction strike. Uh, the spoon is definitely the bait to throw. All right, let's go with the topwater bait. In practice, I caught some really good fish. See, we got a shad spawn, but it's dying out, but at the same time, things were a little behind before. Now, all of a sudden, they're ramping up. This hot weather, we had five, six, seven days of straight, mid-90s. It, it was hotter than blazes out there, and it kind of pushed everything along real quick. It pushed the spawn. It pushed everything you know, the, the bass to push out quicker, low water, and also got those shad spawn kind of going and getting done with quick. But at the same time, there was definitely still a shad spawn pattern. And there's a lot of guys fishing today on the final day that did uh, capitalize on that shad spawn. And one of my favorite topwater baits is just going to be a Zara Spook. This is the saltwater spook. I'm using a Shimano Adrena. It's been one of my favorite rods since I got it. It's a 1611M+. Plus. Good little topwater rod. Uh, I'm using a Shimano Metanium DC. Again, something. I'm, I, what do I need DC? Um, I want to make a, as long of a cast as I absolutely can. And the DC, even when you're from from a, it's just going to make no matter where you are on the on the skill level of castability, it's going to make you even better by giving you more distance. So the DC, I'm using this in the XG again, eight speed. I want to catch up to them quick when they come up and, and take the bait. Uh, but just awesome, awesome little setup, super light, easy to work. You want to throw it all day. In the tournament, I didn't catch many big ones on it. But I caught basically my entire bag on day two. I, I had one spot that I fished offshore a lot. Uh, in day two, the wind was just so bad in there. I spent half of my day in there and just really never caught nothing and ended up having to run windy points at the end of the day with the spook and, and just pick up bites that way just to save it for me and, and, and sneak me into the, the third day cut. So top water, something I'm always going to have on this time of year. Nothing better than getting up in the morning, sipping a coffee. The, the sun's just coming up, and you're running top water, you know, running points and sea walls and stuff like that, trying to get a big bass that's up feeding. Um, one of my favorites, the hair jig. I am a big hair jig guy, whether I'm throwing them for smallmouth up north or whether I'm tossing them on the ledges down south. Uh, this one right here is the Outcast Tackle. It's in 5 eighths. This is the chicken jig. Awesome bait. You know, it's, it's one you just throw it offshore. 
zipping it up, letting it fall, zipping it up, letting it fall. Boom, they bite it. it, it gets big bites. In practice, this thing got me some doozy bites off of what I'd come now to believe are, are community holes, just by judging by how many boats I saw on them. You know, I, well, I'd idle it, and as soon as I'd leave, somebody else would be right behind me idling it, vice versa. It's just kind of the way it goes. On a smaller lake like Lake Fork, and uh, again, a bait that I feel like is a little bit more finessey, doesn't break up the school nearly as bad uh, and I caught some really nice ones in practice doing this a lot of those I never got bites on in the tournament because I, I a lot of them I never really fished there was always a always a boat on on them or something like that so I just never got the opportunity to and like I said I spent a lot of my time in a in a real wooded area of, of Lake Fork on an offshore offshore structure so this, this bait didn't end up playing for me in the tournament but it was the bait I was expecting to catch them all on you know going to bed the night before the tournament and i'll start it on g loomis nrx plus this is the 883c bjr rod bladed jig rod i've been preaching how much i like this rod since i got it in my hand i think it's an awesome setup for how i'm throwing it which is by utilizing braid to a fluorocarbon leader i have 30 pound power pro ssv2 going to a 15 pound seeger invisex fluorocarbon leader uh, it's a pretty long leader i'm running almost i'd say at least 10 feet nine ten feet and um you know that can get the maximum abilities out of both the line i get i get the invisibility i get the the fall at the same time i get the no stretch with the braid it's just a but awesome i can cast it further than i can straight floral so i'm using a shimano 150 xg this is the new corrado sweet little mgl spool on this thing 150 size fits in my hand awesome this is just a sweet new reel that i i got in my hands and i'm, I'm gonna fish it a lot because it's, it's a fun reel the corrado you got the mgl spool i love that spool it casts better than anything i know and now you put it into the corrado that's a win-win for me awesome setup that i use right there three more to go the old ball and chain the carolina rig in the tournament i ended up catching i would say 75 percent of my fish on a carolina rig it just was conducive to the spot i was fishing it was a spot that i wanted to camp out into because i knew the potential of it in practice i caught several big fish two i shouldn't say several i lost a big one and threw back in there and caught my biggest one of of all the time i've been here so far uh, and I also saw gizzard shed like skipping out of the water and it just set up perfect. It was about 15 feet of water. And um, in, in the end in the tournament, it was really conducive to throwing a Carolina rig. Carolina rig in his old school. Carolina rig is very, very Texas. And it's very post bond. I just am a big believer of that fish like weightless plastic when they're coming off the spawn. And a lot of the fish I was catching though, I was catching them from I'd say 14 feet to 30 feet, 20, uh, 25 feet and all these fish had bloody tails which meant that they were spawning and just coming off the spawn and they were getting offshore you know they're getting to those offshore spots so uh, it was this bait came in huge for me it was nostalgia for me it's a lake fork tournament a bass fest type deal um one I watched on TV for a long time. I'm first year, I get to be a part of it. I threw it back and got my G Loomis GLX BCR 874. This rod has just been a good rod for me for a long time. It's obviously a discontinued GLX. It's getting quite old actually. It dates back several GLX models, but again, that just goes to show you the, the investment in the equipment, the investment into the G Loomis family. This is a rod that's stuck around with me for a long time. And now I'm out there on the Bassmaster Elites on Lake Fort, uh, Jack and Giants on it. So awesome, awesome rod, uh, still, still works great. And uh, just kind of goes to show you the value of the equipment. But anyway, I was using the Shimano Corrado. This is a XG. Again, I want a big spool. I want to throw this Carolina rig as far as I possibly am capable of doing. So that 200, that 200 spool on the Corrado, straight 20 pound Seeger Invisex fluorocarbon going to 17. Seeger Invisex fluorocarbon for the leader. I was using a five aught owner round bend hook and then just a eight inch zoom lizard in the red bug color. And that caught me, I ended up running out of the dang baits that I just caught so many, like I said, the spot worked for this. Day three was awesome. We had 21 and change. Um, never did get a super big bite, but we're, we were through back a couple 18 pound bags because uh, you know, fives and a lot of four pounders. It just, uh, was a good spot. It was a good time. And uh, that setup right there has caught me a lot of bass in the last 10 years of my life. That's for sure. 
football jig and once they get off the Carolina rig, I would give them the football jig. And this is the new Outcast Tackle football jig. I was using it, you know, a green pumpkinish color. I'm just throwing a Biospawn Bile Crawl at it, something that flaps in their face. A big, bulky jig. This is three quarter ounce. Um, one thing I was doing with this bait is I was stroking it. Uh, I was, that was how I would get the bite. In practice, I didn't get no bites on jigs because um, I was doing a lot of drag and a lot of drag and just couldn't, you wasn't getting no bites. But, um, you know, one thing I just, Threw it out there, let it fall to the bottom, give it a big stroke. I know my buddy Carl Jockinson, who was staying next to me, told me if you catch yourself throwing a jig, you know, really put it in their face, get that reaction strike out of them. Uh, so I started throwing this in, and I could really get them fired up on it. I land some beautiful bass doing it. Uh, I think my setup for it's absolutely flawless. It's the G Loomis NRX Plus uh, 873C Carolina rig rod. So actually, essentially the same, one of the same models going way back to this GLX, but in the new NRX Plus model, super light rod. Uh, medium heavy action, 7.3, the length straight on it, and I was throwing straight 15 pound Seeger Invisex fluorocarbon line, and I was using the uh, Shimano Bantam, the new one, my new favorite, for if yeah, I just had to pick one, it's hard to beat a Metanium, Crotto, everything has a certain reason why you'd want to use it, but for a new workhorse, mid-range to high-end reel, the Bantam is, is this is an awesome reel, and I was throwing that on the X, this XG model, so again, dragging it, pick up line quick when I set the hook, but big bulky jig. Last but not least, the scrounger head. It's just a great way to cover water when you're looking for them. It's a finessey presentation. I like to throw it. Uh, this right here is like a one ounce scrounger head uh, with a jerky J on it. Uh, it never, again, it's just something that I'm gonna use when I throw offshore. I caught a couple in practice on it. Seemed kind of hit or miss. I didn't get a ton of bites on it. But again, a lot of the stuff that I want to throw this on, which is usually some of your deeper stuff, there just wasn't enough fish on what I had found. I, I'm sure there was plenty of fish and plenty of spots like it, but what I had found in the end wasn't. I like Pickwick, I'm already calling my shot. I'll be putting some in the boat on this deal. Uh, my setup, I like it, it's a new one for me. G Loomis NRX Plus 904C MBR, uh, Mag Bass Rod. 7.6 fast action medium. So not extra fast, it's got more of a fast action, a bit more moderate, uh, perfect for throwing swim baits, big swim baits and stuff like this, and still having that feel, something to be able to feel that bite when they take it. Because a lot of times they take it, they come up from behind the bait, they rush it and you actually feel them moving water on the bait before they actually take it. So it's perfect to have the right action to pull back so that when you do set the hook, you rest assured that the bait is, is in their mouth. Uh, and they ban them and use a straight 15 pound and Seeger and Vizex Floro, sometimes they use straight 17. One last little thing that I would do, and the new product I've been using is bait fuel fish attractant. Um, I've always been a believer in scents and stuff like that. This one struck me as odd as it's actually scentless. There's a lot to it. I'm gonna be posting another little video on some of the stuff that I found pretty interesting when it comes to bait fuel. I don't know, I've been using it now for the last couple tournaments. I like to put it on the baits, especially anything that soaks. It's real easy. I just uh, open up a package like these are these ribbon tail worms right here just squirt a little in there shut the package put it back in and just over the day I keep throwing them like I said that Carolina rig the lizard to have them soaking like that I, I was letting my bait just sit there and and I was working the school pretty relentlessly 75% of the day each day definitely a thing that I just am getting more into is sense and just whatever I can do it's something that as I've been hunting again more and more and more I've been seeing how important it is uh, your scent you know and what what how much it matters that there's no way that that doesn't relate to fishing because hunting and fishing are literally the same thing it's the same mentality so uh, again just bait fuel that's one more little thing that I that I like to use for sure uh, but that is it. That is my nine rods that I'm using in May right now down in Texas on Lake Fork and, uh, and then headed up to the Tennessee River. The bass fisherman me loves it. We're offshore. We're, we're looking for them. We're firing up the graphs. We're following those Navionis contour lines. Pretty stoked for the next couple weeks. And we're back home. I'm sure June will be talking all smallmouth from Lake Mille Lacs. Tight lines.